In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install the Raspberry Pi operating system. But in this case, it's gonna be the 64-bit version of the operating system on a eight gig Raspberry Pi. I've linked a PowerPoint presentation that we've created that you can use. It shows you all the steps of how to set this up. The installation process is the same for four gig as well as eight gig. But firstly, why would we use 64 bit rather than 32 bit? Now, as explained on the Raspberry Pi website, they've been trialing a beta or beta version of this for a while, but now they're opening it up. They talk a bit about the architecture, show you different types of devices. But as an example, the Raspberry Pi 02, as well as the Raspberry Pi 4 have a 64 bit architecture. Now, one of the reasons that they've decided to choose a 64-bit operating system rather than a 32-bit operating system is compatibility. A lot of closed source applications are only available for ARM64. So that's one of the reasons to use 64-bit rather than 32-bit Raspberry Pi. Another reason, which they say is more theoretical, is that you can only use four gig of memory with the 32-bit version of the operating system, but you can use much more memory with a 64-bit operating system. Here we have an eight gig Raspberry Pi. We wanna use the full memory in this device. So to do that, we wanna use a 64-bit version of the operating system. In this example, I'm using this Windows laptop. I'm controlling it from my Mac, but I'm gonna show you the setup using this Windows laptop. Now, the first thing you'll need is a micro SD card. So I've got one here. I'm gonna insert it in here and then put it into the computer. So that's been detected by Windows. And now what I'm gonna do is go to raspberrypi.com forward slash software. I'll put that link below this video. I'm gonna download the Raspberry Pi installer for Windows. At the time of this recording, the imager is version 171. You could also download this for Mac or Ubuntu. This basically allows me to install the software on an SD card. So in my downloads directory, I've got the imager. I'll double click on that. Click yes to install it. It's a very simple installation, so I'm gonna click Install and then click Finish to run the imager. Two things you need is to select the storage. In my example, I've got a 64 gig SD card, but you don't need such a big one. So I'll select that. Next thing I need to do is select the operating system. So I'm gonna say, choose OS. And in this example, I'm gonna select Raspberry Pi OS Other, and I'm going to choose the 64-bit version of the operating system. What I can do now is choose various options. So set a host name, enable SSH. That's good to do because it means I can SSH to the device and I don't have to have a monitor. Now I'm gonna connect a monitor to the Raspberry Pi in this demo. You can decide what authentication to use. I'm gonna use password authentication. The username and password I'm gonna use is Pi Pi. I'm gonna configure the Wi-Fi so that it gets that information automatically, including the name, and the password, it gets that information from your Windows computer directly. My country is gonna be GB in this example. Scrolling down, I'll play a sound when finished and I'll click save. And then I'll click write. We asked, do we wanna erase the existing SD card? I'm gonna say yes to continue. So what that does now is opens the drive, downloads the software, and then installs it directly on the card. So very simple installation. Now some of those options that I showed you, you don't have to set if you don't want to just makes it much easier than trying to do it after the fact. So it's really nice that the wizard has these options such as the Wi-Fi, username and password, and that's pre-configured when you install the operating system, makes it a lot simpler. You can see at the moment that it's busy writing the software to the card. You just need to wait now for that to complete. So that's successfully been written. I'm gonna click continue and I'll close the software, eject the SD card, put it into my Raspberry Pi. And what I'll do now is connect it to this computer. What I need is a HDMI. So I've got a converter taking HDMI to micro HDMI so that I can connect it to the Raspberry Pi. What I'll do is connect my keyboard to the Pi. This is actually going into a KVM type switch so that I can connect to both the Mac or the Raspberry Pi. 
And all I need to do now is power up the Raspberry Pi. Now, initially it takes a while to boot up, so you just need to wait a while. A few moments later. And there you go, a welcome screen display saying welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Before you start using it, there are a few things you need to set up. Click next to get started. I can specify my country, language, time zone. So in my case, it's gonna be London. Click next. The default Pi user account has the password Raspberry. It's recommended that you change that. Now I'm not gonna change the password here because I already did that when I installed the software. And I'm gonna click next. It now searches for Wi-Fi networks. I'm gonna specify the Wi-Fi network that I set up previously and click next. And then I'm gonna click next to update the software. So basically what this does is it reads the packages, updates the software on the Raspberry Pi so that it's ready to go. Now you don't have to do this. You could just use the Raspberry Pi as it is, but this just makes sure that the software is up to date. And there you go, basically, that's how you set up a Raspberry Pi. In this case, using 64-bit rather than 32-bit. I did that on a Raspberry Pi with eight gig, but you could do something similar on a four gig. You could also run it on a Raspberry Pi Zero W. In another video, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to run Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi. So if you wanted to use a different operating system to the Raspberry Pi operating system, you could have a look at that video. I'm hoping you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. That really does help me with the YouTube robots and it lets you know when I upload new content. I'm uploading a whole bunch of new content to this YouTube channel, so please consider subscribing. I'm David Bumble, and I wanna wish you all the very best.